2011, MTV, in continuing their white people problems programming, decided to air a very, 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 very loose spin-off of the slightly worse than mediocre Michael J. Fox movie. It was probably made just to cash in on the shirtless werewolf trend, but I digress. This time it was in a world where racism, sexism, and homophobia don't exist but apparently unresolved homoerotic tension still does. The show stars an ambiguously brown teenager named Scott, who has recently been bitten by a werewolf, and thus gets involved in... werewolf drama. Wake me up! Seriously, the melodrama sometimes kills the vibe. Did you still want to discuss your paper? The show reminds me of my mother's Mexican soap operas, because so much goes on. Dare I explain it all? No, absolutely not. I could barely keep up. But I will explain just how gay the show really is. Scott's best friend is this dude named Styles, and Styles is your typical witty sidekick. <laughs> Scott and Styles like to go investigating for dead bodies in the woods because how else are we going to figure out that these two are complete weirdos? Scott gets bitten by a werewolf in the woods and that drags him and Styles and everyone he loves into the big bad wolf world. If I'm being honest, they're all just emo loners. As Scott and Styles go into the woods again, because they're lovable weirdos, they meet a really edgy Jacob from Twilight with a just as generic name, Derek. Now it is the relationship between Styles and Derek that we're here to talk about and cherry pick evidence to pre-conclude assumptions about. Kidding, but kinda not. Over the course of the seasons, they go from sort of hating each other to loving each other? <laughs> It may be my homosexual agenda talking, but I think there might be something real here. Let's try to examine it with an open mind. <laughs> to the untrained eye, Styles may seem like a straight dude. Uh, well, Dad, there's a conversation that we. You're not gay. Well, I could be. He loves the ladies. Of course he does. I do like girls. Do you? Absolutely. But as me and the entire queer community has acknowledged, liking girls doesn't mean you can't like other genders. So you also like boys? Absolutely. Do you? I said I love you. Now I personally know straight people who just have homoerotic tendencies. But what's the point of making unnecessary jokes about Styles' sexuality, where having same gender attraction is the butt of the joke, and this isn't just a one-time thing. Styles' potential gayness is hinted at throughout the show. One of the first is when he wonders about how attractive he is to gay guys, which is usually a thing only people who want gay guys' attention worry about. I don't think Danny likes me very much. I asked Allison on a date and now we're hanging out. Am I not attractive to gay guys? I make first line and the team captain wants to destroy me and now, now I'm gonna be late for work. Wait, Scott, you didn't, am I attractive to gay guys? You didn't answer my question. Now, this may be a vanity thing, or an overly self-aware type of humor, but it's still only funny in a world where gay is seen as funny. And if this world, as the creator has stated, is truly a world without homophobia, then why do these lines exist? It's not just the homoerotic dialogue, but Styles' attraction to men actually manifests in certain forms. Everyone wants you, you know? You're like the hot girl that every guy wants. Hey, come on, Jackson. You're way too pretty to be out here all by yourself. We should maybe take this upstairs? He's my type. Okay, uh, Isaac can come too. And I also gotta say, this newfound hair wisdom is making me very attractive to you. Shut up. No, seriously. Do you want me to start making out for a second? Just to see how it feels. There's even a point where Styles and Scott go to a gay bar and a guy orders a drink for Scott and not Styles. And Styles gets jealous. That one's paid for. Oh, shut up. Insane. Man. Yeah, well, your face did. <laughs> like I said, it could very well be a vanity thing. But it's not just this one moment. It's things like this that keep happening. These are things that you'd expect a bi person who's interested in a relationship to do. 
Some straight people may do it out of vanity, but even if it's just vanity, I wouldn't be so quick to call Styles the epitome of Chad, the straight dude bro. One more question. What? Do you find me attractive? Over time, Styles seemingly starts to consider his sexuality. Besides being awestruck at how beautifully formed some of his male friends are, he considers that his attention to their abs may mean something. Being the stereotypical hormonally fueled boy, Styles at one point becomes very desperate for some intimacy, and something interesting happens. Someone needs to have sex with me, like today, like someone needs to sex me right now. All right, I'll do it. Boom! What? Come to my place at nine. Plan to stay the night. I like to cuddle. That was so sweet. Are you kidding? Yes. I'm kidding. Okay, you know, you don't toy with a guy's emotions like that, Danny. It's not attractive, all right? Now, any other typical Chad would politely turn down the request if he weren't into it. But Styles has to take a second to think about it. Like, he wants it? He didn't even say, no homo, or it's not gay if you vape. It's just like what happened when Caitlyn asked Styles if he liked guys or girls. Styles didn't say no, and he considered it for a moment. Sure, you could say he isn't 100% totally confirmed bisexual, but you couldn't say that he's 100% totally confirmed straight either. He doesn't really ever identify himself as straight or as liking girls exclusively, and at times expresses interest in being with men. There's totally enough here to read Styles as being attracted to at least men and women, so given the evidence, Styles is probably a raging bisexual. But now, who the hell is this Derek guy? Now Derek is your typical shady emo, who kinda just drifts through the wind and breaks hearts. Well, actually he's the one getting his heart broken. See there's the relationship with Paige when he was a kid, and Kate, Jennifer, and Brayden, and well he gets around. Now we never see him with a man or really express a lot of interest in men, but just because he hasn't doesn't mean he can't be bisexual, or heteroflexible, or pansexual, or madly in love with Styles and fantasizing about him every waking minute. Make assumptions all you want, but you just don't know, alright? We do know that Derek definitely feels... feelings. <laughs> now he says that his anchor has always been anger, and he does have a tendency to drift towards anger, but there was a time when he was soft and still believed in love. In some ways, it mirrors how he and Styles first interacted. I'm just gonna drop it. What happened to Derek and the cello girl? What do you think happened? They're teenagers. One minute, it's I hate you, don't talk to me. The next, it's frantic groping in any dark corner they can manage to find themselves alone in for five minutes. Hey, that sounds an awful lot like Styles and Derek's relationship. Frantic groping and all. But Derek is a really lonely dude. He craves intimacy from people. Are you lonely? Maybe. And although it seems that he completely hates people touching him... Whoa, 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 you? You're not going in there. I'm taking my hand off. Eventually, he starts to soften to the idea. Where at first he doesn't trust Styles, he ends up relying on him. Asking for advice, letting them touch each other and share moments of intimacy. Over time, Derek really softens up, and although we don't know his sexuality for sure, he definitely shows some care for Styles. Roll the next slide. <laughs> now, when Styles first meets Derek, Styles looks very. interested. Like, interested, interested. Perhaps Styles isn't very keen on Derek in the beginning and wants him out of his life, but Derek is still an intriguing bad boy. Like when Styles meets Derek and somehow he knows all of Derek's backstory and what happened to him? A little curious, eh? Styles is scared of Derek, although interested. No more questions. No more talk about the Alpha or Derek. Especially Derek. Who still scares me. He uses curious insults at Derek, like jerk off, which is a very telling word about what's in Styles' head. Jerk off. But over time, he slowly softens up towards him, like when Derek is close to dying and Styles does what he can to try to save his life. 
And although Derek uses a lot of intimidation to get Styles to do what he says, Start the car, or I'm gonna rip your throat out with my teeth. There's this weird air of sexual tension, those pauses, that eye contact. It's like every romantic comedy I've ever seen. Styles also makes a lot of excuses to touch Derek, or be close to them just for the sake of it. And Styles is definitely aware of how hot Derek is to some people, especially when he used Derek to motivate his best friend Danny into helping him. Yes. This. No fit. Then try something else on. Sorry. Ooh. Hey. That one looks pretty good, huh? What do you think, Danny? Huh? The shirt. <sighs> it's... It's not really his color. It's like Styles' weird way of saying, Hey Derek, let's use you because of your beautifully sculpted abdomen that makes me salivate at the mouth. There's an opposites attract sort of thing going on here. Like two puzzle pieces that eventually work together really well. There's this one time where they're fighting this lizard thing called the Kenema, but the Kenema can't swim, so they have to stay in the pool. The problem is, Derek is kinda like, uh, paralyzed. Styles holds up Derek for two hours in the pool. Two hours. Not to mention that there's this girl named Erica sort of just lying unconscious on the other side of the pool. Now Derek insists that they don't trust each other, and that the only reason Styles is keeping him alive is because he's his protection. But Styles looks really offended at that. Did you just trust me this once? No! I'm the one keeping you alive, okay? Have you noticed that? Yeah. And when the paralysis wears off, who's gonna be able to fight that thing, you or me? Okay, so that's why I've been holding you up the past two hours? Yeah. You don't trust me. I don't trust you. But you need me to survive, which is why you're not letting me go. Styles! He tries to defy Derek showing that they should trust each other by letting Derek fall so Styles can get the phone on the other side of the pool deck and try to save them. Well, the phone plan doesn't work out really well because Scott is too busy being stupid, but Styles goes back to holding the two of them up. Eventually, Styles physically can't keep them up much longer. Styles could have let Derek go to save himself over those two hours, but no. If Derek goes down, he goes down. Not even the great love story in Titanic abided by those standards. I'll never let go. Styles, over time, shows devotion to Derek. He's willing to help Derek in situations where it'll be dangerous. And no matter the monster, Styles is willing to sacrifice himself for Derek. In those close moments where it seems all is lost and Derek might be in danger, Styles' true colors come out. He shows visible jealousy at Derek for choosing to be with Jennifer, but it comes from a place of caring gay carry. When he sees Derek lying on the ground, perhaps even dead, he stops. There's a moment where he's sad, maybe even realizing his true feelings. He later comes back for Derek, trying everything he has to get him to come back, punching him out of sexual frustration. They're laying on top of each other. Even if it isn't romantic or sexual love, there is some genuine form of love coming from Styles, even in the lowest of Styles' lows. When he was possessed by some weird Japanese demon thing, he tried to communicate with Derek. He tried to tell him something. He put names of a bunch of people on a chessboard so he could send out a message to his friends. Who was the king? Derek. The most important piece. The most vulnerable. And it's not that 2002 alternative rock spirit that made this chessboard. As Peter said, Chess is Styles' game. But who is Styles to Derek? Derek doesn't seem keen on Styles when first meeting him. He's just a stupid kid that gets in the way. Skinny, defenseless, Styles. But there's still a palpable homoerotic tension. It's crazy how much this guy likes pushing Styles up against a wall. Hell, even the de-aged version of Derek, which is every fanfiction come true by the way, pushes Styles up against walls seductively. It's not like they became all lovey-dovey with each other, but there's a real chemistry forming, like a partners in crime thing. Derek even saved Styles from harm in the first season, and even though most people with stupid supernatural powers would save their 
associates. Saving someone's life isn't something that you just forget about. Styles returns the favor too. When they're dealing with the Kenema, like I said before, Styles is the one that saves Derek. Well, for a while at least. This stupid kid held him above water for two hours. That's gotta build some sort of trust and relationship. Their relationship becomes more than unnecessary gay touches and prolonged stares. <laughs> slowly becomes a habit for Derek to save Styles' life, and the lives of those he cares about. Derek isn't unfeeling and cold, he does feel things. Sadness. Love. Hanger at the season 4 finale of Sherlock. Peter even says, And even somebody as burned and dead on the inside as me knows better than to underestimate the simple yet undeniable power of human love. When Styles gets infested by the goth J-pop star, Derek does everything in his power to save him. He takes notice of how devoted Styles is, and becomes devoted in turn. But is it gay? <laughs> now all of these things could just be a sign of a great friendship. And while that's true, it's still no reason to outright deny that there could be a romantic connection here. They're always noticing each other, touching, giving each other interested looks. Romantic or sexual love can't be objectively argued for. It's something that people sense and that can be conveyed through body language or even cinematography. The fact that thousands of people have come to the same conclusion should speak on its own. And even when they're angry with each other, there's some weird obvious tension. Besides just becoming masters of bands, they start to actually trust each other, especially after they save each other's lives like a million times. I mean in iCarly it only took one life-saving moment for Carly to love Freddy, so what's the deal here? And the writers seem to deliberately torture us with these scenes. Take the suggestive collision that happens when they're both paralyzed. They didn't have to land on top of each other in a way that happens in every movie with a romantic subplot. It could be a friendship, but it could also be something else. And I fear it's a something else that isn't very good. In an interview with After Elton, Jeff Davis, the creator of the show, made this comment about the Teen Wolf he was trying to create. I'm trying to create a world where there's no racism, there's no sexism, there's no homophobia. And I know it's not real life, but I kind of don't care. I like to create a world where none of that matters. You have the supernatural creatures for that to work as an analogy. In my mind, if you can create a world like that on TV, maybe life starts to imitate it. While that certainly is an admirable intention, it's not possible. You can't create media that is detached from the world you live in. There will always be traces of the culture it was created in, and it's our world. There are still gender roles, there are still heteronormative attitudes, and the casual joking gay references. Boyd, one of Derek's pack, is the only one that didn't get a backstory, and is also, by coincidence, one of the only black characters. There are some openly queer characters. The ones that get the most screen time are Danny and Ethan. There's also Caitlyn and her girlfriend, Callie and Mason, and these stories were done relatively well in some regards, but they were never at the forefront. The romances were unexplored, and the characters were secondary. Danny even just sort of disappeared. There is some representation, which I am really grateful for. But the problem is that there seems to be a lot of bait. For Pete's sake, they literally queer baited Danny. And also, what about all those queerish moments between Styles and Derek that were probably put in for fan service? The actors and creators are sometimes receptive to Steric in a good way, but only in ways that attract open minded and queer viewers, and then kick them to the curb. I think Steric is a bizarre, weird, twisted thing, and I think anyone who pays more attention to Steric than the show, um, isn't watching the show for the right reasons. Why is it a bizarre, weird, and twisted thing? Why? And it's not like they didn't try to milk Steric for everything it was worth. Look at this video. The two actors who play Styles and Derek act all touchy with each other on a ship. A ship! Oh yeah, because that wasn't created to get a bunch of fans hopes up that maybe, maybe they might get an actual queer romance this time. And they only did that so they could get their fans to vote for Teen Wolf for the Teen Choice Awards. Vote for us. Uh, it's Teen Wolf uh, for best summer show? Yeah, choice Teen show? Choice Summer Show. Something. Just find Teen Wolf and vote for it. Just whenever you see Teen Wolf, fill in that circle because we really appreciate it. And we'll take more naps like these for you. 
maybe on you stream. I, yeah, and now I'm gonna be stuck to that. Ah, Derek all the way. This is queer baiting. They are trying to get viewers to look at this with the hope that it indicates some form of queerness. They actively encourage it, and then call fans of the pairing twisted? What a load of crap. The problem wasn't that Steric didn't become canon. Although they surely baited the hell out of it, which is its own terrible problem, they also baited the fans on Styles' sexuality, constantly having him subtly hint that he could possibly be bisexual, so people like me could think that for a second, I could be represented beyond a character that appears for 5 minutes. They tease bisexuality, give no development for LGBT characters or their romance, and then they tell fans they're weirdos for reading something else into a show? That's perfectly reasonable. <sighs> All right, Steric. Are they gay in love? Bantering lads, a part of one giant queer bait, or something else entirely? I couldn't tell you for sure. Besides the queer baiting, all in all, Teen Wolf is a show. It is quite a show. But in the end, are they gay? You decide.